there. I want to thank you for joining me today for episode 20 of Midmo Mama. My name is Jenny and I live in Sedalia, Missouri in the United States where I am making in the Midwest. My program is about yarn crafts, food, and whatever else I decide I want to talk about. And in today's episode, I'm going to tell you about um, some projects that I have finished. And I'm going to tell you about a special shrimp bake that I made. And a taco dip platter. And um, snickerdoodles. And I'm going to finish some books. So if that sounds like stuff you're interested in, let's get this show on the road. And now it's time for Mama Crafts. And I finished some projects. They're super duper little projects, but I finished and it's so it's so refreshing to me to be able to show you stuff that I've actually finished for a change rather than stuff that I'm working through. So and it's small, it's it's nothing big. I didn't do an epic project, but these are absolutely adorable. I made these mini mini stockings for my tree because since we've had a cat and we got our we got our cat I think in I think he, I think we got him in 2017 every time we put up a Christmas tree he would break one a few of our ornaments because he thought that the Christmas ornaments on the tree were toys for him and so he would bat the ornaments and obviously you know occasionally one would fall off of the tree and break the ornament would break especially those super duper thin glass ones so of course last year i said oh i need to start knitting and crocheting ornaments for the tree well that ne never materialized. As a matter of fact, the moment I said it, I probably forgot that I had said it. So, so when I was decorating the tree this year, I said, well, I'm going to start knitting and crocheting my ornaments in, starting in 2021. Well, I had put a post on parlor. Sorry, I like to cross my legs when I chit-chat. <laughs> I'm a cross-legged chit chatter <laughs> so I was on parlor and I was chit chatting with one of um, the ladies on there who knit and uh, yeah I, and I mentioned uh, I put, posted a picture of my tree and people said how pretty it was and I said yeah I said we can only decorate the top half of the tree because we have a full eight foot tree and we could pretty much only put the ornaments on the upper four feet. <laughs> Everything else is pretty much bare because of our cat. So I said, yeah, I'm going to knit and crochet some ornaments. And the lady responded to me and she said, I just developed a, a couple of ornament patterns. She said, would you test them out for me? And I said, yes. So her name is um, Kelly Vaughn. But she owns uh, an Etsy shop called Knit Swag. And I have some stuff on order for her. I, I received part of my order already, but um, I was going to wait for the customized part of my order to arrive. And then I'll do a, a little show about her. But in the meantime, um, in my show notes for today, I have linked the patterns. Um, the patterns are available on Etsy. So, um, the first one I want to show you is called, um, the pattern is called the Mini 2x2 Striped Stocking by Kelly Vaughn at Knit Swag. So all the links are there. So, uh, the Knit Swag link is there, um, and it'll take you directly to her site and you can find her patterns. So these, I'll show you the red and white one first. 
But this is the 2x2 two two, uh, striped stocking. Mainly, it's a mini. Mainly 2x2 two two striped stocking. And it's absolutely adorable. I mean, just so cute. And so I made the red one. And I made a green one. These are for my tree. And then my daughter loved these. She thought they were just adorable. So she said, Mom, will you make me a pink and white one? So I made her a pink and white one. And it's washed out. It doesn't show up as well. So all three together. There's red, green, and pink. Very cute. I'm very pleased with those. I also made um, a purple and yellow one. Uh, I have uh, a, there's a guy that comes in dropping off equipment for us to calibrate, and uh, he he makes fishing lures, and he has you know I craft and he crafts. So so he when he walks in he asks me what I'm working on. And I showed him the stockings I was working on. And he showed me the fishing lures that he was making for ornaments. Because he was making fishing lures for ornaments. And he said, I tell you what. He says, if you make me a stocking, um, I'll make you a fishing lure ornament. I said, oh, that'd be great. So we're going to trade. And I said, well, what colors do you want? And he didn't come up with that. I, I know he's from Louisiana, so I said, well, do you want one in LSU colors? And he said, oh, man, that would be awesome. So I made him a purple and yellow one. But I took it to work already, because he'll, he'll come in tomorrow, and I, I didn't want to forget. Um, so, um, Monday morning, I put it straight away in my pocket. And then when I got to work, I put it in my desk drawer so that when when he comes in tomorrow, I'll be able to exchange ornaments with him. He better made me one because I don't want to just give him one and then not get something back. Oh, I guess that would just be nice, though. I guess I can just be nice for one. So if he doesn't end up making me one, that's fine. But So there's the striped one. And then the other one... I made it was uh, by the same designer, Knit Swag, um, was the mini checkerboard, checkerboard stocking. So this is what it looks like. It's so cute. Look at that. And I made a red one and I made a green one. And of course I made a pink one for my daughter. Aren't they beautiful? I just love them. So the stripes and the checkerboard are just absolutely adorable. Absolutely adorable. And I enjoyed making them and they weren't that hard. Now I tell you, I've, I've never done color work before. I, I haven't, not, not on knitting needles. I've done some color work on knitting looms, but not very much uh, with knitting needles. So this was a little bit of a challenge for me, but, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't hard. You know, I, I, I didn't experience any moments of frustration with it at all. So if, if you're not, if you're not sure you would like something that would, that alternates everyone, yeah, it most certainly takes a little bit longer because, you know, you're dropping the yarn and picking it up and dropping the yarn and picking it up. And I do have a finger tool that has two feeds on it, but I wasn't sure where I had put it. You know, because I thought maybe I would try it. But I don't know how I would use it if I was going to purl. So I, I wasn't ready to try a new thing, because once I got going on these, I was like, okay, gangbusters, I ain't stopping. So, so that was fun. I enjoyed that. And then, um, so I worked on those at midnight, but um, Monday night, this past Monday night, I didn't know 
I had had it in my mind that I wanted to start a hat. Because I never got around to making hats for my kids other than the one. So, I wanted to start a hat. But Monday after work, I piddled around and didn't get my pattern or my yarn ready. So, I just took the thing that I was enjoying before I started making the stockings, and that was my um, sweater. So, in my Geeky Girls knit bag, I made a little bit of progress on my Janet Guthrie sweater. Uh, the pattern is by Ann Hansen. And I'll show a picture of it on there. And so since the last time I had made some progress and I'd showed it to you, but this is where I'm at now. And since the last time, here's here's where I put the the marker right here. So I've I've only made it a few rows, about eight rows maybe, since this stitch marker. But you know, progress is progress, and I only worked on this for about two and a half hours. I Monday night I was tired. I even actually left a little bit early because I just wasn't feeling it. So I made a little bit of progress on my Janet Guthrie, and it's a it's very nice. Um, so, so I'm really pleased with the progress on that, and I think I think um, before before I hit the weekend, I'm going to see if I can't get some yarn ready to cast on the hats. Although I don't know, I'm kind of tempted to work on that sweater some more. You know, because you know, I reason with myself, well, if I make them hats, are they really going to wear them? But that's all that I'm working on as far as crafts. So let's move on to the next segment. And now it's time for Mama's Pattern Showcase. And this is the part of the show where I show you um, patterns um, on Ravelry that are, are also available from other sources. I go to the top 20. And so I choose, you know, I find I find the top patterns that are available elsewhere, and I show them to you here. So last week I did three crochet patterns and two knit patterns. So this week I would do two crochet patterns and three knit patterns. So the first pattern I would like to showcase is the favorite hat by Sonia. Auto. Um, this pattern is number one on the top uh, crochet top 20. You can purchase it on Ravelry for four dollars or you can get it free at the Pretty Stitch on YouTube. Okay, so she doesn't have a, a, a print pattern, she's got well, she's got the print pattern on Ravelry. But she's got a video pattern of this on uh, her YouTube channel. And the, the link to her channel is The Pretty Stitch. And it's in my show notes, okay? So, let me tell you about it. It is a crochet hat in sizes child to adult using U.S. crochet terminology. Um... It's an intermediate crochet level. It says this this is pattern three in my series 12 Days of Warmth. There is also a video for this pattern. You can find it here. And it's the link to her YouTube channel. The favorite hat is literally my favorite hat. It is my favorite hat that I have ever designed. The pattern has been tested, and she says many thanks to my testers. So it's an adorable hat. It's very cute. It's got a little bit of a zigzag pattern to it. You can do it in single colors, or you can do it in stripes, or however you like. 
and the samples that she has posted are very very lovely so check out that one the favorite hat by Sonia Otto Otto by Otto O T T O Otto the next pattern I would like to showcase is Rocking Horse by Veronica Cromwell. This pattern is number two on the Crochet Top 20. You can purchase it for $4.21 on Ravelry or you can get it from issue number 33 of Crochet Now magazine. It is a, um, it uses bulky yarn and a J hook. Um, it uses UK crochet terminology, but the pattern of course is in English. It says, this cute rocking horse is a perfect addition to any Christmas decor and a lovely toy for little ones after. The pattern is beginner friendly. You will need a size 6mm hook, a small amount of black yarn, toy stuffing, tapestry needle, and two black safety eyes, 12mm. Very nice. So check out issue 33 of Crochet Now magazine and you'll be able to obtain a copy of that pattern. It is, it is really an adorable um, stuffy. And it's a fairly decent size. She gives the dimensions, but they're in centimeters, and I'm not going to convert that for you. But she said it was 75 centimeters tall by 67 centimeters wide. So, if you like doing stuffies, I suggest you take a look at that one and see if you can get a back issue. Looks like issue 33 was the September 2018 issue. So I, apparently somebody on Ravelry made it and then it was all the rage. And so that's probably why it's number two on the Crochet Top 20. But usually most magazines have back issues available. So um, I didn't look. So if it's not available, I apologize for leading me down the wrong path. But... Um, if you can obtain a copy and, and you're a stuffy maker, then I think that would be a good choice. So now we're going to talk about the knit patterns. The first knit pattern I would like to showcase is called Mutz 2. It's M-U-T-Z-E and the number 2. It's a numeral 2. By Norman Schwarz. Um, this pattern is number 5 on the Knitting Top 20, and you can get it for free at Nimble Needles website. It's not even a, a Ravelry download, so you have to go to Nimble Needles website to obtain the pattern. Um, it's a hat. Um, using light fingering. It suggests cashmere. So, you might give that a try. It's, um, they, you use a needle size US 1.5, which is a 2.5 millimeter, and you'll use a 2.5, 3 millimeter needles. Um, it's only available in one size, looks like. A simple cashmere hat pattern with an inverted hem that can be easily adapted to any size and other types of yarn. Most of it is knit in plain stockinette stitch while the inside of the hem is a one by one rib. There are very detailed instructions on how to adjust this hat to any other size, but you will have to do it yourself. So it's more of a very detailed recipe. There are no instructions for other sizes. Given that a lot of makers will want to knit this in a more affordable yarn, 
I thought this was the much better choice. If you choose the same yarn, you will need three balls, 25 grams each of yarn, because it's cashmere. Though I only used up half of the skein in the contrasting color, so if you plan to knit two hats, you'd only need five. This hat is knit in the round. You will need two sets of needles, either circulars or DPNs, because the inside of the hem is knit with one needle size smaller, both to make the ribbing look neater and to adjust for the difference, different ease. So if you're interested in making your first cashmere hat, or if you just want to make a, a hat that has a, um, a reinforced brim on the inside, I guess that would add a whole lot, whole separate dimension of warmth. And check out that one. It's a free pattern um, at, the, at the website, Nimble Needles. So that is Mutt's 2 by Norman Schwartz. The next pattern that I would like to showcase is called Juniper Moose by Rachel Borello Carrillo. Carol. <laughs> Sorry, I got, I, got, I got ahead of myself. I apologize. I, I said her name wrong. It's Juniper Moose by Rachel Borello Carroll. And the pattern is available at the Knit Picks website. It is not a Ravelry download. Um, it uses Knit Picks Big O, Big o yarn, which is bulky. Uh, and it uses a US-10 knitting needle. You need 330 yards. And the moose is about 12 inches tall. It's a pattern available in English. It is a free pattern. Pick up your needles and spread some winter cheer. Juniper moose is knitted in soft, squishy, big O yarn to make him extra floppy and cuddly. But he would be just at home on the mantle as, as in a stocking. He is made in pieces and sewn together and his optional wreath is fully removable. So there's a wreath around his neck. Very, very, very cute. This pattern is number 8 on the Knitting Top 20. And like I said, you can get it free at Knit Picks. And I tell you what, this moose is very adorable. So if you like the rocking horse but you don't, don't crochet, check out the juniper moose because it's it's a similar item. It's got, and it, it's knitted. So, and that's very adorable. Just very, very cute. So check out Juniper Moose by Rachel Borello Carroll. I want, I want to, I want to rhyme. So that's why I was going Rachel Borello Carello because it rhymed, but if her last name isn't Carello, it is Carol. C A R R O L L. So. Cute pattern. And finally, um, the third knit pattern I would like to uh, showcase is called the Ribbed Temperature Blanket or Scarf by Gabrielle. Um, Vizina. Uh, this pattern is number 17 on the Knitting Top 20. And the pattern is free at Gabrielle Knits website. Um, um, it, she recommended worsted weight yarn and US 8 needles. Uh, you can make a scarf 60 inches by 14 and a half inches, or you can make a blanket 60 inches by 51 inches. And the pattern is available in English and French. She gives you a link for a friendly cow knit, knit along um, for 2021. 
Oh, I didn't click the link. Let me find out where that link goes. Oh, it's a it's a Ravelry group. So, so if you want to join her Ravelry group and knit along with her, that'd be good. But it says temperature blankets and temperature scarves are always a popular project amongst knitters. The concept is to knit one row for each day of the year in a color corresponding to the temperature on that day. They are great projects because they are easy to knit. They are the pinnacle of the loyal whip that will always be there for your knit flicks nights. They have this little spark of magic that comes with multicolored projects. You can't really imagine what they'll look like until they're done. They are a long-term commitment like most knitters love and they are amazing stash busters. For all these reasons, I decided to knit one in 2021. I'm hopeful that 2021 will be a great year to remember. I hope that you will join the knit along and that we can all make friends and beautiful blankets. The link includes a tutorial to learn how to prepare and knit your project and the pattern to knit your own ribbed temperature blanket or scarf. So, that's good. I, you know, I tried to make temperature scarves for my kids. What I had, and I did all the research and everything, I was going to make one for all four kids for the year they were born in the location they were born. So, my two oldest boys were born in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, so, for the year they were born, I got the, I was going to do the high temperatures. So, I did, so I had that all cataloged. My daughter was born in uh, Fairbanks, Alaska. Um, so, hers was all mapped out. And it was from, from the day they were born for their first year. And then my stepson, he was born in New Jersey. So, and I, and so I used um, Trenton, New Jersey's uh, temperature uh, thing. And I was going to do it, but it was too much. Because I was doing two rows per day. Because I wanted to do a row this way and then a row back. And it, the scarves were just too long, and I'm like, you're not going to wear a scarf. And the scarf is going to be draped around somewhere, and they're going to be afraid to throw it away because I spent so much time on it. But they're never going to wear it because it was just going to be too long. So I didn't end up doing it. Now, it would have made a really fun blanket, but I didn't want to make four blankets all at the same time. And I don't think I would have knitted one. Crochet tends to be a little bit uh, quicker. So, if I'm going to make a blanket of any kind, I'm prone to crochet it rather than knit it. Um, but, I don't know. I, I've, I, saved, I saved the temperature charts, so I might go back and do that, but I, I'm, you know, I, I'll keep the charts just, just in case, but... I'm leaning towards no one that can make a temperature anything for the kids, but but that concludes Mama's Pattern Showcase. Um, in review, we had the Favorite Hat by Sonia Otto and the Rocking Horse by Veronica Cromwell. Those were the two crochet patterns, and then. Um, we have the three knit patterns, which was Much Too by Norman Schwarz, uh, Juniper Moose by Rachel Borello Carroll, and Ribbed Temperature Blanket or Scarf by Gabrielle Vizina. So that concludes Mama's Pattern Showcase. Let's move on to the next segment. And now it's time for Mama Cooks. And I cooked and baked this week, which is great because I didn't do hardly anything in the past couple of weeks. I was in kind of a cooking strike, I guess. 
I go through that. I just, you know, there's times when I just don't feel like going into the kitchen, so we end up eating stuff like hot dogs and macaroni and cheese, or, you know, we eat out, or, you know, I, you know, make stuff out of a box, or whatever, you know, stuff that nobody cares about, you know. So, I don't like to share stuff that's, you know, that I make that's special. So, I'm not going to show you how I make my macaroni and cheese or hamburger helper or anything like that. That's, that's silly. So, um, the first recipe I'm going to share with you is called Taco Dip Platter. I made this for our Christmas family gathering at church every year. Our church has a Christmas fellowship where everybody brings finger foods and treats and it's set up buffet style. <clears throat> they have they have like four big tables set up on all the corners with food, you know, and um they have games and crafts and music and it's just it's just a wonderful time of eating and fellowshipping and um we social distanced you know for the most part and uh you know we had we had gloves so everybody wore you know food service gloves to dip their food from and and stuff like that so we were very sanitary and um and we had a good visit and we weren't we weren't crammed at large tables there were smaller tables so we were sitting in groups of family and a lot of family they stuck to their own table but some families that were smaller were mingled with a couple of other families but uh it was all good <laughs> But anyway, I made this uh, taco dip platter, and I made some snickerdoodles, which I'll talk about in Mama Bakes. But uh, this recipe, the taco dip platter, I got. I'm still using this um, Best of Country Cooking um, by Taste of Home. It's a 2000, and I just, I'm just really enjoying these recipes in here. I su subscribed to Taste of Home magazine for years. And every year I would buy their uh, yearbook, which contained all of the recipes that I had just subscribed to in the magazine, but they were contained in a book just like this. Well, they're packed away somewhere, and I can't get to them. But uh, my mom doesn't cook anymore, and so she gave me all her cookbooks, and so she's, she's got a whole library of these, about probably about five years worth and so I just started cooking out of this one and they're the same type of recipes that you would find in country cooking or, or uh, taste of home um, and also quick cooking I uh, subscribed to that one as well and would buy the yearbook for quick quick cooking as well but that's this this is the yearbook the best of country cooking so at any rate I got the recipe from here, and it was good. It was basic. Um, it was just your traditional layered um, dip using refried beans and guacamole and salsa and uh, sour cream and, and whatnot, and you serve it with tortilla chips. Um, I just followed the recipe, although the recipe told me to use two cups of sour cream, and I didn't pay attention. I thought I said one cup, so I only used one cup of sour cream, but that's fine. No, I'm sure nobody noticed. But I made the recipe exactly like, um, like it said in the book, except for only using one cup of sour cream. So used to, I guess, no, but you know, one, you know, half, half of the container was enough, so I just didn't pay attention. I was one cup, one cup, oh, it must be one cup of this too, but it wasn't, it was two cups. But it was delicious. I had some, and we served it with tortilla chips, and it went, um, there was a little tiny smidge 
of it left on the platter and Audrey just scraped it off into the trash. Um, the, the chips were all eaten, so it was nice to come home with an empty platter. That was good. So this is how I made the taco dip platter. For taco dip platter, you will need one can, 15 ounces, refried beans, one cup chunky salsa, one cup guacamole, two cups sour cream, one can, four ounces, chopped green chilies, one can, two and a quarter ounces, sliced ripe olives drained, half cup finely shredded cheddar cheese, half cup finely shredded Monterey Jack cheese, tortilla chips. Spread beans on a 12 inch serving plate. Layer salsa, guacamole, and sour cream over the beans, leaving a one inch uncovered uh, around the edge of each layer. Sprinkle with chilies, olives, and cheeses. Refrigerate until ready to serve. Serve with tortilla chips. And that is how you make taco dip platter. The next thing I would like to talk about is a casserole that I made last Thursday. Uh, my cat came in here and he likes to play with the window blinds. So if he's making a lot of racket, I noticed he did that last episode. He was playing with the blinds and it caused a lot of background noise. So if he starts playing with the blinds, that's what that clacking sound is. So he's looking at him. He's Thank you. Stay away from him. So I made a special shrimp bake. And personally, I didn't care for it. Audrey really liked it. Um, one, I used pre-cooked shrimp. And because I used pre-cooked shrimp, putting it in the casserole was dumb because it overcooked the shrimp. And the shrimp was very, very chewy and tough. So maybe if I had made it with raw shrimp, like I should have, then maybe it would have turned out better. The flavors of it were fine. Um, it, it tasted fine. I just, I guess I just was, <clears throat> excuse me, I was dissatisfied <laughs> with the way the shrimp turned out. But it's called Special Shrimp Bake. And what did I do different? There's one thing I did different. It asked for an eighth of a teaspoon of ground mace. I didn't have any ground mace and I looked at my grocery store um, and they did not have ground mace and I didn't want to go to Walmart that day. I, I have I have pretty much, I mean there's several other choices in town, but I either go to Woods, which is a locally, uh, a Missouri owned grocery store. So there's Woods or there's Walmart. <clears throat> Well, I get frustrated at Walmart because just, there's just too many people there and I'm just not, it doesn't make me happy. So I go to Woods to, to buy most of my groceries and they have a fuel saver program. So when I buy groceries, I get cents off on my fuel and if I fill up my gas tank at their gas station, I get, you know, whatever money cents a gallon off. So. So to me, I, even though I'm probably paying a little bit more for the groceries, I'm getting it back by filling up my gas tank. So it's fine. Um, and yeah, I mean, I would, I would say that Walmart's grocery prices are significantly less. Um, you know, and when we go to Walmart on the rare occasion, I'm like, man, we should really do our groceries at Walmart, but I really don't. So I don't, <laughs> um, if I can help it. At any rate, 
I apologize. I got off track. Um, so instead of ground mace, I used Old Bay seasoning because I had Old Bay seasoning on hand and I thought that that was a good substitute. So I used Old Bay seasoning and then the regular ground pepper and cayenne pepper, which was suggested in the recipe. Also, this recipe called for almonds, toasted almonds. One, I forgot to toast them. But two, I don't think they added anything good to the to the casserole. It added crunch to the dish. And I'm wondering if that's what was supposed to make it special, but I didn't like it. I didn't like having the almonds in there. So so just because if this recipe wasn't for me doesn't mean that this recipe is not going to be for you. So if you like shrimp like I do, I do like shrimp, I do, then I recommend that you try this recipe out for special shrimp bake. So here's how I made it. For special shrimp bake, you will need three quarts water, one tablespoon plus one teaspoon salt divided, two and a half pounds uncooked medium shrimp peeled and deveined, two tablespoons vegetable oil, one tablespoon lemon juice, one quarter cup finely chopped green pepper, one quarter cup finely chopped onion, two tablespoons butter, one can 10 and 3 quarter ounces condensed tomato soup undiluted, one cup whipping cream, two and a quarter cups cooked rice, one eighth teaspoon each of Old Bay seasoning, black pepper, and cayenne pepper, one half cup slivered almonds toasted, divided. In a Dutch oven, bring water and one tablespoon of salt to a boil. Add shrimp, cook for three minutes or until pink. Drain. Sprinkle sh shrimp with oil and lemon juice, set aside. In a skillet, saute green pepper and onion in butter for five minutes or until tender. Add soup, cream, rice, seasonings, and a quarter cup of the almonds, and the remaining salt. Set aside one cup of shrimp. Add the remaining shrimp to the rice mixture. Transfer to a greased two-quart baking dish. Bake uncovered at 350 degrees for 30 to 35 minutes. Top with reserved shrimp and remaining almonds. Bake, bake for 20 minutes longer until the shrimp are lightly browned. And that is how you make special shrimp bake. And now it's time for Mama Bakes. And this time I made a batch of snickerdoodles. I have my recipe in the show notes, just like I have all the other recipes that I make. I don't know where this recipe came from. It's possible it came from a Betty Crocker cookbook because um, that's where most of our um, cookie recipes come from in our family, but I, I couldn't swear to it. I have no idea. But um, it's a wonderful recipe. It's very easy to make and I had them done in no time. Um, I made the snickerdoodles along with the taco dip um, for the Christmas family gathering. So, and they were delicious. Um, I didn't come home with an empty tin, but um, I traded some. Um, there was another lady named Dina 
who made these wonderful cinnamon cookies, but they weren't they weren't cinnamon like snickerdoodles. They were cinnamon like like a they were like a cinnamon spice cookie, which was more like a. She said that she used a cake mix to make them, and I mentioned she used a spice cake mix. But they were they were wonderful. So so. So I was complimenting her on her cookies and she was complimenting me on my cookies. I said, well, let's trade some because at the end of the evening we both had some left over. So she gave me half of what she had of her cookies and I gave her half of what I had left of my cookies. So, <laughs> so it was a nice trade. But <clears throat> And then whatever was left of my cookies, Scott ate them. I got two. I got two of my own cookies, and that was it. He gobbled up the rest of them. And he doesn't have any teeth, but they were soft. But he doesn't have any teeth, so so he must have really, really enjoyed them if, you know, he ate them without teeth. He's getting his, his um, temporary plate fixed today. He's going in there and having them file it down or something. He's not getting his real implants until I think February because they have to make sure all of the <clears throat> all of his gums are completely completely healed um, before they fit him for his permanent implant so so I chase rabbits I chase rabbits too much I'm sorry but um, this is how I make snickerdoodles for snickerdoodles, you will need one cup butter, one and a half cups sugar, two large eggs, two and three quarter cups flour, two teaspoons cream of tartar, one teaspoon baking soda, one quarter teaspoon salt, three tablespoons sugar, three teaspoons cinnamon. Preheat oven to 350 degrees. Mix butter, sugar, and eggs thoroughly in a large bowl. Combine flour, cream of tartar, baking soda, and salt in a separate bowl. Blend the dry ingredients into the butter mixture. Chill dough for about 15 minutes. Meanwhile, mix sugar and cinnamon in a small bowl. Form into one inch balls of dough. Coat in sugar cinnamon mixture and place two inches apart on cookie sheet. Bake 12 minutes. Remove from pan immediately. And that's how you make snickerdoodles. And now it's time for Mama Reads. And I finished two books since the last time. I have finished, I finished this just yesterday. Uh, this book is called What Cancer Cannot Do. But, um, Stories of Hope and Encouragement by Phyllis Ten Elshoff. It was really good. I gave it five stars, and I very seldom give a book five stars. When I was going through cancer, I didn't want to read all the cancer books that people gave to me. Because I didn't want to think about it. And, you know what, if I had read this book, that probably would have helped me a little bit. Um... Not that I was, I mean, yeah, I was definitely suffering, um, but this probably would have encouraged me a little bit along the way, and I just didn't let it, because I was, you know, you get tired of talking about it when you're going through it, you know, because that's all people want to talk about, how you're feeling, what you're doing, how, you know, all of that, and so when I was by myself, I didn't want to be thinking about cancer because I was thinking about it enough every time I left the house. So, but 
this is a good book even if you're not going through cancer if you're going through a difficult time this has been immensely encouraging just reading this over the past couple of weeks it warmed my heart so um, so and, and I know there's lots of books out there that will give you hope and comfort and courage you know devotions and whatnot but I just found this one to be very very helpful so check that one out whether you're suffering from cancer or not that is a very good good book the next book I had finished was just a children's storybook. It's a little bit dusty because I had it in a spot that was kind of collecting dust. This is a children's book called Movies Are Magic, A Kid's History of the Moving Image from the Dawn of Time to About 1939 by Jennifer Churchill. This is an adorable book. Um, I know the author. Um, I, in 2010 and 2011, I went to the Turner Classic Movies um, Classic Film Festival in Hollywood, California. Um, and I met her um, and uh, we, we met on opening night and we kind of chummed around together because she was alone and I was alone and we were about the same age. She's probably a little, she's probably about five, maybe ten years younger than me. But we were, you know, we were about the same age and we were just kind of, we had a little bit in common. So we found around together and after I'd gone to the 2010 one, I went to the 2011 one because they had featured me in a commercial, which I need to show that to you sometime. Maybe I'll save that for next episode. I don't want to put that in there today. But at any rate, I know her, and so she started writing a kid's book um, a couple of years ago, and I had bought this, but I never sat down to actually read it. And so yesterday, I just sat down and I read through it, and it was the most charming little book if you want to, if if you like classic movies, and you have children that you want to develop their interest in um, the history of filmmaking, this is an adorable book. And it, she goes through and talks about different, um, uh, you know, different types of movies that came out. It has an introduction by Ben Mankiewicz who is one of the film, uh, film boots, one of the film uh, presenters on Turner Classic Movies, whom we both met, by the way. Um, but I just, um, I really enjoyed the book. And, you know, to be perfectly honest, there are a few movies in here that I have not seen. So I need to, I need to watch them. I didn't watch the Spanish Dracula. So it was very good. It was a very good, um, it was a very good book and the illustrations were adorable. And it was a lot of fun. So if uh, if you have a child or even, even on your own, you can buy a copy of this. I think you can get it on Amazon. I think you can buy it from Turner Classic Movies website. And I think she's working on a follow-up to this um, uh, from 1939 on. Or maybe, you know, maybe she's doing increments. I, I don't know. We, we communicate from time to time. We're, we're Facebook friends. Um, but we don't, you know, we, uh, our lives are, are different. So, um, but she's, she's a very nice lady and very, very good book. And this is her little son. Uh, Weston, and then they've got a dog named Oscar. So, it's adorable. Very good book. It's illustrated by Howell Edwards. So, so those are the two books I finished. Uh, I haven't decided what novel I'm going to start reading today, but uh, 
I'll let you know next episode. Um, I'm also continuing to read Biscuits, Butter, and Blessings, Farm Fresh Devotions for Hope and Comfort by Linda Kozar. And I am, I keep saying I'm almost done, but I am almost done. I'm on page 160 out of two something, 206. I'm getting there. It's just, I haven't been going downstairs to knit. I, I go down maybe once or twice between episodes to knit, and I do one then. I'm getting through it. I'm not in any hurry to finish. It's not that big a deal. And then I'm also still working on Advent, The Weary World Rejoices by Lifeway Women. And we're almost done with this one. We have our final, um, our final lesson next Wednesday. Um, we haven't done any more crafts with it. Um, last episode, I, or last week, I told everybody to bring a box of Christmas cards and we'll make out Christmas cards. And then we ended up not making, uh, you know, some folks brought some, but we never did pull them out to make. We were just visiting. But next Wednesday is the big thing. We're going to make homemade marshmallows, which is uh, next Wednesday, the 23rd. And I'm pretty excited about that because now everybody will have homemade marshmallows to put in their hot chocolate for Christmas Eve. So, and it, it wasn't in the right order. Um, the marshmallows were, were done in like week, uh, less than two or three or something like that. But, oh, it was the one, it was the lesson before Thanksgiving. Well, I didn't want to be working on marshmallows the day before Thanksgiving because one, not everybody would was able to be there. And two, um, you know, it was the day before Thanksgiving. People don't have time to be goofing around in the kitchen. So so I said, well, I'll tell you what, everybody. Since everybody's interested in making the homemade marshmallows, we'll make them on the final get-together for the study. And uh, and since it'll be on the 23rd, that means everybody will have homemade marshmallows to put in their hot cocoa for Christmas Eve. So they all like that idea, so we're going to make the homemade marshmallows. I'll let you know how that turns out. <laughs> but that's it for currently reading. So let's move on to the next segment. And now it's time for Movie Mama. And I watched a few movies. I watched quite a few because I don't know what. Oh, because I was making all them Christmas stockings. And um, and so I found them easy to do while watching the movie. So I watched... I watched The Courtship of Eddie's Father... From 1963, featuring Glenn Ford, Shirley Jones, and Ronnie Howard, and it was it was heartbreaking and heartwarming all at the same time. Poor little Ronnie Howard and Glenn Ford, Mama, Mama passed away, and so the. The character played by Glenn Ford, he's, you know, I mean, it's like it just, just happened, you know. So, you know, he's going back to work, and poor Ronnie Howard's going back to school, and they're both a little bit traumatized. And the lady across the, the hallway from their apartment is um, very nice, played by Shirley Jones. She was, a, she was, um, the mom's best friend, and you know, the 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 dad. The dad starts dating right away, and poor Ronnie Howard doesn't like her, but he likes the lady across the hallway. She's such a nice lady and very sweet, and so it's a romance. But it's it's very sad because you know. They were struggling with the loss of the mom and stuff. But it's supposed to be cute, but, you know, when you when you look at the movie, you're like, oh, all of this stuff is happening too fast. Mama just died. 
you know, they need time to, you know, they need time to heal. But he, he gets right into dating and stuff, and poor little boy, he's all confused and doesn't understand, you know. But it was a really good movie. It was a really good movie. I enjoyed it. It was just, it was sad. It was a sad movie. But it was a good movie, too, because it had a happy ending. But, you know, when there's a death in the family, like the mom, that's a big deal. And I, they, you know, the filmmakers didn't treat that as a very big deal, I don't think. I mean, they did. I mean, it, I mean, they, you know, it was traumatic. But the way people told stories back then, because everything had to move fast, you know. And of course, you know, they didn't have time to go into, you know, the psychological ramifications of grief and all of that stuff. They touched on it a little bit, but but it was it was a heartwarming movie though. So if you ever get a chance to see the courtship of Eddie's father from 1963. I recommend it. That was a good one. I watched Heart of the Holidays from 2020 with, with Vanessa Lenges and Corey Sevier. I wrote it down that I watched it, but when I looked at the picture, I, I, I can't remember what it was about. Clearly, I wasn't paying attention to that one. Heart of the Holidays. Yes, I do. I remember now. Yes, that was a good one. Yep, that was a good one. I had to think about it for a little while. So that was the one where um, they, ha they have a little town. And the woman is trying to establish a little museum. And the old guy who was part owner of the museum kind of let, let the factory, it was a hat factory, fall apart. And he got mad because she was making a museum out of the old factory. And it turned into a big, ugly thing. But it turned out to be okay in the end. So, it was just a Hallmark movie. I watched The Miracle on 34th Street from 1947, featuring Edmund Gwynn and Maureen O'Hara and Natalie Wood which is a perpetual favorite of mine, year after year after year. There are a few that I must watch every season. That's one of them. Um, a Christmas Story is another one that I have to watch, which I haven't watched yet. Um, the Bishop's Wife, which I haven't watched yet. I heard it was on TV last night, and I didn't have time to watch it. I like The Bishop's Wife, and... Um, Oh, we watched we watched the Charlie Brown Christmas a couple of weeks ago, so that was good. But that, that's a TV show. That's not really a movie. Um, and there's one more that I have to watch every year, but now I don't remember which one it is. So it don't matter. But I did watch A Miracle on 34th Street. The one on Disney Plus. It looks like it's colorized. But it is not the the um, the the picture link in Disney Plus. The the movie picture is colorized, but when you go to play it, it's actually the black and white version. So um, so you know if you're one of those purists and you can't stand colorized black and white movies, this is not a colorized black and white movie. It's it's actual black and white on Disney Plus. So, so there's that. Um, I also, on Disney Plus, I watched um, The Twelve Dates of Christmas, which was adorable. It was like Groundhog Day, only it was Christmas. And it was, it was wonderful. She woke up 12 times <laughs> to different things. So, um, I thought that was a good movie. It, it was from 2011, featuring Amy Smart and Mark Paul Gosselar. Yeah, I don't know who these people are in the, in these Hallmark movies. I, 
It was a Hallmark style movie, but it wasn't Hallmark because it was on Disney Plus, so it couldn't have been a Hallmark movie. Or maybe it could have been. I don't know. Um, I also watched the Christmas Waltz from 2020 with Lacey Chambert and Will Kemp, and that one was good. I enjoyed that. And then I also watched Annie Claus is Coming to Town with Maria Thayer, Sam Page, and Vivica A. Fox. And I thought that was an adorable movie. She, she's, um, she's the daughter of Santa Claus, Annie Claus, and she has to go out into the world to decide if she's going to continue with her, her um, North Pole gig or if she's going to go off and do something else. And it was, it was adorable. So those are the movies I watched. Um, they were most, most of them were Christmas themed, except for The Courtship of Eddie's Father. Um, but they were good, good movies. I enjoyed each one uh, for their own, in their own right. So that was good. And uh, so that concludes Movie Mama. So I'll let you... Let you, let you know about more movies next time. So let's move on to the next segment. And now it's time for Miscellaneous Mama. And this is the part of the show where I just tell you whatever I feel like telling you. Um, I already told you about the Christmas family gathering during the Mama Cook segment, so I'm not going to talk about Christmas family gathering at church. Coming up tomorrow night, I am meeting with a friend, and we are going to try diamond art. Hold on, I'm going to show you what we're going to do. Hold on. I'm back. Um... So I have a girlfriend who wanted to do something during a football game without having to watch a football game. And I said, let's try. And I'd seen these kits at Hobby Lobby. And I was very interested in them. But I'm like, oh, I don't know if I want to start a new hobby. I just don't know. But I, but I kept getting drawn to them. And so my girlfriend and I... You know, I offered to teach her knitter crochet, but she's not, she doesn't want to do anything that involved. So I suggested, well, let's try these diamond art things. And so I told her I'd bring her a kit and we can work on them during the football game. And that way she can, we can sit at the table and she can still be with her family, but not have to pay attention to what's on the TV. Because she wanted the distractions. She wanted just something to do. So, I got these diamond art kits. And I tell you what, if, if you go on Amazon and you search diamond art, there are hundreds of kits available out there. And they are all absolutely beautiful. And there's different kinds. You can, you can get pretty, you know, pretty scenes. Or you can get um, pop art, like, you know, Star Wars or... Um, Marvel and so you can get Disney ones but there's these little it's called diamond art and I want to show you the ones I got I got the I got the children's ones because they're for beginners we're just starting out and so um, we uh, I thought we would just start with start easy so I got these ones okay so I got an elephant I got a rose and I got a llama. So these are children's kits, I'm not going to lie. But they're for beginners. And I figured this is the best way to get our feet wet. And if we decide we don't like them, at least we're not out a whole lot of money. These were $10 a piece. And I got one for my daughter. My daughter wanted the flower. So I'm going to take these ones with me and I'll let her choose which one she wants. And then I'll do the other one. Um, but we're going to try that, and if we enjoy it, we're going to get together uh, on a regular basis and, and work on these together. So that sounds fun. And this is very affordable. Um, when I was looking online, 
you can get um, kits that had multiple um, kits in them for a very little amount of money. So I, I didn't think that this was overly expensive. I think they're beautiful. And, you know, of course, I showed them to Scott yesterday, and he goes, well, what do you do with them when you're done? I said, well, you can frame them and put them on your wall, or I chose you can cut them out and put them on your tote bag, or you can make a pillow out of them, or some kind of a de decoration or whatever. He said, oh. He said, that's great. He said, clutter up the walls with a bunch of sparkly art. I said, well, why not? Why not? So we're going to give it a try, and if we all enjoy it, then we're going to get together. Of course, Audrey's, Audrey's only here for a little bit longer. She, she flies back to Alaska on January 6th, so she'll only be around for a little while. But uh, Tiffany and I will get together and try this and see if we like it. And then if we do, we'll keep going with it. And if we decide we don't like it, then we'll find something else. Maybe we'll do an actual paint by number. We'll see. At any rate, we're going to start that. So I'll let you know how that worked out next episode. Um, I want to wish my sister a happy birthday. Um, my sister's, uh, my sister's having her birthday on Saturday. Um, I haven't seen her in a very long time. And I do not even know if she knows I have a show. We don't, we don't communicate. That's her choice. That's not my choice. Um, but I do wish my sister Katie a happy birthday. Happy birthday, Katie. And, um, Saturday night... We are driving down to Lowry, Missouri. If you have not been to Lowry, Missouri at Christmas time, you must go. Um, we are going down to experience the Enchanted Festival of Lights. And we do this every year, and it is worth it every time. Uh, it's, it's kind of a, a winding country road that we have to drive down. I mean, if, if, if you get motion sick, it's kind of... It's kind of unsettling. <laughs> By the time you're about to be sick, you're there. So, And then you, everything settles down. And then you drive back. And it doesn't seem like it's as twisty turny driving back as it does going down. So I don't know what the difference is. At any rate, we go down to the Enchanted Festival of Lights. And it is a huge... They take um, the county fairgrounds... I don't know what county it is, I can't remember, but it's the county fairgrounds in Lowry, Missouri, and they convert it to a drive-through Christmas light park, and different um, companies and businesses in the surrounding community sponsor a Christmas light station. It's free to the public. There are people at the end of the park um, with buckets for donations, but you're not required to give them anything. We do. As a matter of fact, we'll go through it the first time, and we'll give them part of our donation, and then we'll drive right back through it. We'll go right back in line and drive through it a second time, because you have to do it twice, and then we'll, we'll give the rest of our donation at the end and they, they hand out um, candy canes at the end so usually we get candy canes twice but last time we didn't we said we, we got the candy canes the first time this is our second time too he said well you can have some more candy canes and we're like no <laughs> one's enough and then there's a place we go down to eat afterwards called uh, chances are although the first time we went there it was fantastic Subsequent visits, I have enjoyed the food less. So I'm kind of wanting to try something else this, next, this time. But anyway, we're going to go down there Saturday night. We're going to go see the lights twice and eat, go someplace to eat. So that will be enjoyable. I'm looking forward to that Saturday. And we've got a Christmas Eve candlelight service at church. Um, 
<clears throat> and that's at 6 or 6.30. 6 or 6.30. I'll find out before we go. And Christmas Eve, what do we do on Christmas Eve? I make um, Rotel and we have Rotel and if there's cookies left, we eat cookies and just, we have snacks on Christmas Eve. And then we're going to my folks' house on Christmas Day to have a big meal. I think, I'm not sure what we're having. Usually Dad wants to have a prime rib on Christmas Day. So we might do that. I don't know. We might do ham. It's either going to be ham or prime rib. So that's good, Christmas Day. But what is Christmas? What is Christmas? Is it about the meal? Is it about the Christmas lights? Is it about the gifts? No. Christmas is about the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And um, it's important to keep that in your, in your heart during this time of the year. Um, Jesus is the Savior of the world. And he will save anybody who acknowledges that he is the Savior of the world. And so, um, God, God, you know, created man. Um, it was a perfect creation until sin entered the world. And the entire Old Testament points to the coming of a Savior. And over the course of time, Jesus, God said that he would send someone to redeem us from our sin. And back in the Jewish days, they would have to sacrifice an unblemished animal to atone for their sin. Well, that still wasn't a perfect sacrifice because, you know, an animal does not have a sin nature like a human being has. So Jesus came and he was the perfect unblemished sacrifice because God cannot allow sin to come into heaven with him. He cannot allow sin in his presence. So the only way that we can be redeemed for our sins is for innocent blood to be shed for us. And in those days it was with a, with a, uh, an animal sacrifice. So because God saw the sins of man, he created a plan for us to have restored fellowship with God. And that was through um, the birth of Jesus. Mary was a virgin, and the Holy Spirit came upon her, and she gave birth to Jesus. And um, he lived a perfect life. He never sinned, never once. But he was tried for blasphemy because he did not lie. He came to testify to the truth. And the truth is is that we are all sinners and we cannot do anything to save ourselves so in order for us to have fellowship with God we have to acknowledge one that we cannot save ourselves but two we have to acknowledge that Jesus Christ was born and he lived a sinless life and he died an unjust death on a cross to atone for the sin of the entire world and not one of us not one of us is um, is without sin so God made a way for each of us to be saved. 
and that is through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now he hung on a cross and he died and they buried him in a borrowed tomb and he rose from the dead and he came back and he taught the disciples for an additional 40 days and then he ascended into heaven where he sits right next to God the Father and he's promised that he's going to come back and so um, we need to be ready the Bible doesn't say when Jesus is going to return not a single soul knows when Jesus will return but he will because the, the Bible says so the Bible is God's Word and so we trust what the Bible tells us so um, we can be thankful that Jesus is going to return. But once you trust Christ for salvation, you are in fellowship with God. Because what Jesus did on the cross paid the penalty for my sin. So, um, so because because he died in my place, I have salvation. And I get to spend, when I die, I get to spend uh, the remainder of eternity with the Father in heaven. Because his blood covers my sin. So it's, um, it's just as if I hadn't sinned. Because when, when God looks at me, he sees the blood of his son covering me so that's a very that's a very beautiful thing and if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior I encourage you um, to seek because when you seek you will find if um, if you need to know more about Jesus I can help I can help you um, but there's people in your community that are also available to help you um, there's you know, there's, there's any one of the local churches, um, you know, Baptist, I'm Baptist, but we're not the only Christians on the planet. Um, you know, there's, there's uh, Presbyterians, there are Lutherans, there are, um, there are Christian churches, there are Methodist churches, there are Assembly of God, there are, um, you know, there, there are any number, there, there's, there's numerous non-denominational churches, so, you know, the answers can be found if you're seeking earnestly, and all you got to do really is pick up a Bible and start reading the book of, well, any one of the Gospels. Everybody recommends that you read John first, but read any one of the Gospels. That tells you all you need to know about Jesus. There's four of them, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Read any one of those four Gospels, and you know who Jesus is. So, there, there are means. There are means to know about Jesus if you want to know. So, on, let's see. So, watch out for January's episode. My next episode will be January 7th. I'm going to start some giveaways. I'm going to start one giveaway at a time. So, um, but we're going to have several of them. And I'm going to do my knitting and crochet year in review on my next episode. And so we'll be watching for that on January 7th. So let's move on to the next segment. I want to thank you for joining me today. I know that spending your time with me is a choice. And I am grateful that you have chosen uh, to spend your time with me. Uh, if you enjoyed what you saw today, I would like to encourage you to click subscribe uh, so that you can find me more easily next time. Um, episodes are posted on the first and third Thursday of every month. But if you click on the notification bell, uh, you'll get a notice whenever a new episode goes public. If you want to ask me any questions, 
You can comment below or you can contact me via email at midmomama2 at gmail.com. I can be found on Instagram as midmomama1. On Ravelry and on Parla, I am also midmomama. Until next time, may God bless you. Merry Christmas. And I wish you a Happy New Year. Bye.